नमस्कार अनि हार्दिक स्वागत छ युथ टेलिभिजन शो मेकिंग नेपाल प्राउड ग्लोबली मा नेपाली युवाहरुको विश्वका विभिन्न देशका युवाहरु संघको सहकार्यबाट नै यस कार्यक्रमको जन्म भएको हो यस कार्यक्रमको मुख्य उद्देश्य भन्नु नै विश्व समुदायमा नेपाललाई निकै नै सकारात्मक तरिकाबाट प्रस्तुत गर्नु हो टुडेज युथ एशियाले गत 7 वर्षदेखि निरन्तर रूपमा गर्दै आएको विभिन्न Youth programs are like this. Yes, Karikrama, Hamile Samavesh Karni, Prayas Karikasam. Azo Karikrama Hami Sanga, America Street Intermedia Communication Trainings Ka Adyakshe, Team Ward Ju Hununsa. Wahali, public speaking ko Maddem Bata, Kosari Prabhav Shali Tarikama, Communicate Karna Sakin Sabhane Vishema, Training Dide Hununsa. I'd like to start by asking you a question. How many of you want to be leaders? Please raise your hand. Great, all of you. How many of you, when you are attempting to be leaders, feel that people don't listen to you? People don't listen to you or pay attention to what you say. Okay, that's a common problem. Not just for young people, but really anybody seeking to become a leader. How do you get people to really listen to you? That's what I'm going to speak to you about today. It's a session on communicating with authority. And there are three elements that I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about your body language, your use of voice, and then the words you choose to convey your message. And what I'm going to tell you about these three things are principles that work over the world for helping people really hear you as someone speaking with authority. So let's start with body language. First, posture. When you're addressing a group, you want to make sure that you stand in a way that is straight and also solid, just like I'm doing now. Think of yourself like a tree that's rooted in the ground and growing up from the trunk. This sense of solidness makes you seem confident. Compare that with some speakers you see who like this, are sort of going like a, a reed in the wind you feel they're not even confident of their words because they're not even able to root themselves in the ground. So you don't want to do this. Some other speakers, they tend to wander when they talk. And if I'm speaking to you like this, then first of all, it may be a little difficult to follow me, but also I seem a little bit like a, ca a lion in a cage or something, <laughs> wandering, wandering back and forth. So you don't want to do that. You want to stay in one place. Occasionally, you might want to change your position for some reason, but walk and then stand again. So this sense of solidness comes across. So that's number one. Be solid. What you do with your head is also important. You want to keep your head level, like this. This, again, is the position of authority looking directly at your audience, with your head straight towards them. There are some things to avoid. First, have you ever seen a speaker talk to you like this? When someone raises their head like this, they're literally looking down at you. And so this is a, this is a way of holding your head that's associated with arrogance. And as a leader, you do not want to appear to be arrogant. So don't tilt your head. Similarly, be careful you don't bow your head like this. When you see my head like this, what do you automatically feel? That's right, that I'm shy or scared or embarrassed. So that's not very effective. Something we also see that you want to avoid is tilting your head to one side. Now, I notice some of you listening to me are actually doing that. You're tilting your head to one side. That's okay when you're listening because this is a, a, an expression that signals receptiveness to what someone is saying. So it can be appropriate when you are listening to them. It signals, I want to hear more. But when you're speaking with authority, if you stand like this, your receptiveness is not what you want to convey. Instead, you want to convey that your message is coming this way. So watch what you do to your head, especially if you chronically listen like this. Even Barack Obama, who's an excellent speaker, often speaks with his head like this. It's a habit he's gotten because he's a very good listener. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, gestures. Your arms and hands tell an important part of your story. So when you speak, you should use your hands to gesture for emphasis. I think this comes from the fact that we as a species, as human beings, for thousands of years were storytellers. And 
In ancient times when we told stories, our hands conveyed so much of the message. So when someone speaks, we actually watch their hands for their engagement and enthusiasm. So you have to be careful you don't trap your hands. And so often I see speakers talking like this. Their hands are trapped. Or like this, their hands are invisible. Or like this, as if they're hiding something in their hands. So you want to avoid this, this, and this, this, because that traps your hands. Instead, your relaxed position should just be with your hands at your sides. Now, interestingly enough, a lot of people feel quite awkward with their hands at their sides. And this is because we have a natural tendency to want to protect ourselves when we feel nervous or anxious. And for many people, addressing a crowd makes them feel quite nervous, quite vulnerable. So to protect yourself, there's a tendency to go like this or this. You do feel more protected, but when you stand like this, what does that portray to my audience? It makes me seem literally closed. Closed. And this is open. So you want to project openness, and in a sense, fearlessness, when you're speaking to your audience. So you go like this and gesture naturally. So that's really important. Don't go like this. Even if it's cold in the room, when you're speaking, stay open to your audience like this. So that's the importance of gestures and openness. The third element of body language is eye contact. Your eyes connect you with your audience. So when you're giving a talk to a group of people, or even a single individual, you want to be looking at them so they can see you. And in that moment, we connect. You really feel at one with the speaker. Now, how many of you so far in this short talk have felt connected to me because I've looked at you? Just raise your hand so I, can, so I can see. How many of you felt that I've looked at you and connected with you? And I've only been speaking for about five minutes. That sense of connection is vital for leaders. You want people not just to see you talking, but feel that you are speaking to them. And it's, it takes practice to look at people well. So I want to explain how to do this. What you do is you look at someone for a second, and you'll get that sense of connection. Sometimes, if you make an important point, they'll nod at you when you make that point. So if somebody goes like this, you know you've connected with them, and you can move to somebody else. What you want to avoid, first of all, scanning your audience. How many of you feel that I'm connecting with you now? Nobody. Right? It's like my head's a robot that's just swiveling from side to side. So don't just scan. You need to connect with individuals in the group. Second, beware of notes. Can I borrow your notes for a second? How many of you have heard speakers talk like this? My topic for today is animal rights and animal testing. Do any of you feel con Yeah, you've heard speakers do that. How many of you feel any connection with me when I'm reading? No, there's no connection when you're reading your notes. Now, sometimes you do need notes. I'm very fortunate. The talk I'm giving you today, I've given hundreds of times. So I know it really well. But if it's a new topic, you do need notes, and that's fine. But you should prepare notes in short bullet points. And your notes only give you the key word to remind you of what you're going to say on each topic. Then when you're doing your delivery, you glance down and just for a second read the bullet and then you come up and you connect with your audience again. So that's how to use your notes, short bullet points to avoid reading.